Hey guys, let's make some fruit. This is a strawberry margarita. And this is a great one for mom. And this is another just general one. And then how to package. That's what so many people don't do is show you how to package and how to transport without it falling all over the place. We'll throw in a little bit of chocolate covered strawberries and package them up real cute. All we're gonna need are a couple of knives a circle cookie cutter, and a cutting board. We'll start with our prepping our kale, and you can see it's really wilty and sad looking. If your cutting board moves around on your counter, you can just put a little sticky thing underneath it. First thing you're gonna do though is just chop off the ends. And let me tell you, I am a professional. I used to do fruit bouquets for 1-800-Flowers in my area. I had a storefront book uh, storefront bakery and we contracted with 1-800 flowers to do their fruit bouquets so these are tips and tricks that not everybody knows you're welcome you're going to cut down the center of your cantaloupe this is a big cantaloupe too and a good sharp knife is really important Oh, and start by washing all your fruit. Always wash all your fruit. And you're just going to take out all the seeds. Some people use a melon baller. No need. Just use a spoon. But yeah, if you wash all your fruit and dry it off, then it's better. Oh, see there I show you. My cutting board had been moving around, so I tucked that under there. Once you cut it in half... You're going to cut that in half, then you're going to section these off. And usually on a big cantaloupe like this, you can cut it in half, and then you can get three out of each quarter. And the inside is a little slimy where the seeds were, so you just cut that off, and then cut off the outer part. I'll do this a couple of times. I've got this video in double time, because it was a long video. I show you there, you can hold it and cut it if it's easier. But it's in double time, and so I'll talk fast. <laughs> no, it's just that way. If you need to slow things down, I think you can actually do that through YouTube. I've never done it, but I heard you can. I cut some of them a little smaller to go in a smaller thing that we have. And here, pro tip, if you'll put your skewer up to the side of it, put your thumb there, and then poke it all the way in. That way you can get maximum pokey without poking through, <laughs> if that makes sense. I didn't have my camera on when I cut my pineapple the first time, so I just had to simulate here. You can hold it by the top and then just cut your sections. Look at that simulation. Isn't that amazing? Pretty good at that. Now these are other types of cookie cutters you can get, but you don't have to invest in them if you don't already have something like that. These little thin plastic ones, they're going to give you an impression and you can use a knife to cut it. And they're in the center of the pineapple where the core is. It, it's a lot better to put your skewer through that. It holds a lot better than if you put it through the softer part of the pineapple. So when I make this heart, I just cut it out with the knife, but I did make sure the core was at the bottom of the heart so I can put my skewer in there. And you can see I have a bowl there. There's a lot of extra pineapple part that's really good, so you don't want to throw it away. Make a little fruit cocktail. And the hearts like this aren't gonna be exactly perfect, but it looks really good. I covered this one in chocolate. Turned out real nice. As I always say, you're going to focus on imperfections when you're working with it, but once you put it part of a bigger picture, you're not going to notice it. And I think that heart turned out pretty good. Just put the skewer in that core part, and it's very secure. Pineapples are full of moisture, so we're going to dip some of this in our chocolate in a little bit, but you really have to be careful. You can see the cores in the center of that tulip. Then there's your little flower. 
It's in the center as well. But usually I do pineapple pretty early in the process because I'm going to set it on paper towels and let some of that moisture come out. And here I'm going to cut the center of this one out and then put a grape in it. So that's a super cute way to mix it up a little. I think down the road I'll probably show you how I make smiley faces and different things. And here I'm going to write the word mom. Again, you can tell the core is kind of at the bottom of the zero, the zero, <laughs> the O. That way I would still have that to put the skewer in. See? And then you don't even have to go all the way through and it's still really secure. I'm going to show you how to make an M and you don't have to have any special tools. Cut it in a square. And again, making sure that that core is going to be at the bottom to the right of the M, and that's where you can put your skewer. Just kind of measure it to make sure it's going to be about the right size. And this one's super easy. Angle, angle, there's the top of an M. Straight, straight. Now cut another angle and another angle. And it's that easy. And there I put the skewer in that right side. And does that not, bring it down Dion so we can see it. Thank you. Does that not look like an MTVM? Do you want me to play some 80s music in the middle of this video? Now I'm gonna have to put on some 80s music. Comment if you like 80s music. I know my demographic, so I bet you do. And here I'm just trying to make sure that I get the right sizing. I just wanted to show it the second time. Because it's kind of fun to watch. I love watching people do stuff. We're going to start having Foodie Friday. Where I do stuff like decorate cakes or kind of give you a little hint as to my homemade buttercream and what makes it really, really good. Now we'll move on to our oranges. Cut them in half. Cut up that in half. Cut that in half. These are things that, I mean, when I learned how to do it, I'm like, wow, that's so much easier than, than I thought it would be. And y'all are all going, um, we have kids. We know how to cut oranges. We take them to the soccer game. I don't have kids, so I never did. When I skewer them, I go a little, well, right there I show you, kind of cut off the ugly parts. But I don't go straight up. I kind of go off to the, ink, to the side a little. Same thing on the apples here. In half, in half, in half. And then the apples definitely cut off the inside where the seeds would be. With 1-800-Flowers, we never served apples except dipped in chocolate. Because, you know, apples are notorious for getting brown. You'll see that in a minute. Now on to skewering our grapes. If it's a big arrangement, then usually you put four. But we were doing small ones, so I just put three. Please wash your stuff. Everything. Wash, wash, wash it. But don't wash it until it's time to use it. And especially with strawberries. Because as soon as you wash something, it starts to deteriorate. And we're going to be dipping these strawberries. So it's very important that they're dry. So I've washed them. Now I'm kind of drying them off. If you get an ugly one, throw it away. We're going to do some of these as chocolate dipped strawberries in a container and then we're going to put some on skewers like that. Now these are not going to be dipped so I leave the greenery on. It helps to hold it on because the chocolate does help to hold it on but if you're not dipping it you need all the help you can get. 
and when you're using skewers. I showed you a minute ago one was split. Don't use split ones because you don't want those splinters to stay inside your strawberries. Now these are going to be dipped and I always use Ghirardelli chocolate. You can take dark chocolate and white chocolate and mix it and make milk chocolate. These are all found at Walmart and I used to, they used to not have the milk chocolate, but now they do. You're going to get some wax paper or some parchment paper, either way, and a styrofoam block from Dollar Tree. And when you dip a strawberry, I usually do it three times. It's like dip, spin, dip, spin, dip. And then you're going to, now, I show this in real time because I want you to see it takes a minute. If you try to put this up in the styrofoam right now, that chocolate's just going to drip, 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 drip and make a mess. So let it sit there. Let the chocolate drip off. And we all know that I'm not very patient, so actually I try to do two at a time typically. But this is one of those things. Just be patient. Dip, 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 dip. This one's in double time. I don't do it that fast. <laughs> When you're melting your chocolate, you want to do your microwave at half power, and you want to go a minute the first round. Then scrape the side of the bowl really good, scrape the bottom really good, because that's where most of the heat is concentrated. And then you'll go 30 second intervals after that. And you don't want your chocolate to be too hot, because it'll fall off. And if it's not hot enough, then it's hard to dip. Here I'm going to show you some coconut. We're going to put that on there. And you really do need to let it get close to solidified. Because if you put it on too early, it just, the weight of the stuff just brings the chocolate right off. And this is Bits of Brickle by Heath. I meant to show you a picture of it, but I don't have it anymore. And just spin it around, kind of keeping the chocolate moving around until it solidifies some. And here on chocolate dipped strawberries, I, I don't go all the way up to the greenery. And then I'll sit it down for just a second to get some of that excess chocolate off. And then I do one more time of drying because if you get moisture in your chocolate, it will seize it up. And it's kind of hard to recover from seized up chocolate. I try to hold the leaves out of the way so that I can get as far up as I can, but inevitably they'll jump out of my fingers and get chocolate on them. And you can go back once that chocolate that you've, the excess chocolate, and just peel that off the wax paper and throw it back in the bowl so you're not wasting it. Now the white chocolate, this is after a minute in the microwave. So like I said, really Scrape around the sides. It won't look like anything after the minute, but don't go f further than a minute. Do the minute, stir it up, then 30 seconds. And usually that's enough that you can let it just melt itself there. It's hot enough that you don't have to go again, but sometimes you may have to. And the Ghirardelli chocolate is so good. It tastes delicious and it's so smooth to, to dip in. And I will um, <laughs> put some stripes on there. Yeah, I try something new. You know, I, I always like to show you guys if I'm trying something new. So if I mess up, you'll know it's not just you if you mess up. I could edit it out, but I think it's a great learning experience. <laughs> That's when I saw a guy and he'd like, would just sling it and then put it on the chocolate that way. I was not good at that. <laughs> That's horrible. I usually use a piping bag, but I didn't really want to do a piping bag. I mean, he just, the way he flipped his wrist and it just went on so beautifully. That did not work for me. It's a matter of practice, and so I do end up practicing a little more. I get a little better towards the end. But that's why I like to show you guys this, because you don't have to be perfect ever, but you definitely don't have to be perfect the first few times. Things like this take time. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. 
It was pretty bad in my opinion. Ultimately, I find out that instead of flinging my wrist like he did, I just kind of moved it back and forth and that made it a lot better. There were still times it was too thick, the lines were, or too thin, but ultimately I started getting the hang of it, so it's easier that way than having to put all your chocolate in a piping bag and melt it in the microwave. Now here are the apple slices. Oh, see, I didn't let you see that they were brown. <laughs> And like I said, this isn't, there they were brown, you could see. But it is in double time. And so I don't tap that hard or that fast because things can fall off the skewers if you're not careful. So I popped a bubble there that was forming. But yeah, don't, don't be too abrupt with it because they will fall off. And you can see there the bits of brickle is kind of pulling the chocolate down because I didn't let it get solidified enough it's a patience issue <laughs> but I also I think I just end up setting it down on the wax paper and here I'm drizzling across these and they weren't too bad like I say I started getting a little better at it but that chocolatier I watched he was amazing I really wanted to do that I thought Oof, that's gonna be so cool I'm gonna look so professional and it did not work out. <laughs> but I am going to work on it. And I hope you guys do too. I hope you do some of this stuff and have some fun with it. Here we're going to do some pineapples. I use a paper towel and kind of try to get the moisture as much as I can. And then just dip it. And now I will let a lot of that chocolate fall back in. But there is a point where if I think it's starting to fall off of what's actually touched the pineapple, then I'll put it over the paper towel and just keep moving it till it solidifies. But I don't want that excess chocolate that might have some moisture in it falling into my chocolate bowl. And it does take time. Here's the thing too. I prepped way more stuff than I needed for the bouquets I did. So if you just prep what you need, it will not take that long. And it's a lot of fun and it's, they're impressive. I love the way they look. The biggest arrangement I did was $270. I can't even remember how much fruit was in it. It was crazy. But like I said, you can make them smaller or you can make them bigger. It's all up to you. See, it looks pretty. Now we're going to half dip our little flower. And the key is, you saw me kind of tilt it there, is to get a nice straight line on the front. The back may not be perfect, but at least get a good line on the front. And you can see in there that there's a little part that didn't get chocolate, but I don't sweat that not a problem and if you have your wax paper close you can set that down on it once it's a little bit solidified and then it'll finish getting hard then now you can't save the chocolate that's right there on the paper towel it's just gone this is a little tulip that I dip or half dip I think but you see all that moisture just by putting it in that paper towel you don't want that in your chocolate bowl and I've said it a million times because it's that important now I'm gonna drizzle across this see I'm getting better Here is another pro tip. Most of the people I saw that did this on YouTube, they used styrofoam, but I learned by using lettuce because styrofoam really, you don't want it around your food, I think. 
So by putting lettuce in there, it holds the skewers in wonderfully. And it's edible, so it's not going to hurt anything. Just going to get you a big chunk and fill up your whatever vessel you're using. This is a great little cup that says, Best Mom Ever. It came from Walmart. It's real cute. Now remember that kale that was all limp and yucky? Putting it in the water? Look at that. Look how full and pretty now. That's crazy. That is the same kale. That's another pro tip. People aren't going to tell you that kind of stuff. And then just break off the edges and fill it in. Now here's all my prepped fruit. And then I just cut off the skewers at an angle. And this is where you can do whatever you want. I like things symmetrical. So I do try to what I do on one side, I do on the other side. Use some snips to cut those skewers. And another tip, if you have some needle nose pliers, not ones that are all oily and dirty and greasy from the garage, but if you have some in your crafting tools, you can use that to start putting the skewers in. Once it starts getting fuller, it's harder to get your hand in there. So some nice needle nose will you grip it and push the skewer in that way. And here are our strawberries. And those are my crafting snips. So they're not from the garage or my wood shop. And some strawberries that are not chocolate covered just bring so much color. I love it. I'm sorry, I'm watching. <laughs> I've done that before. I just become fascinated by all this stuff. And there I'm just trying to see how tall I'm going to want it. Put my O in. And an M. And another M. And we're going to cover those skewers with more kale here in a moment. But it's good to kind of get your base going, then put in your focal, and then fill in with other stuff. Look at that. So pretty. And again, this is just, you can put whatever you like. Here's where I wish I had some needle nose pliers. And it gets to the point that I have to go and get them. Because I just, I can't get a good grip on it. And you can't push on the fruit. If you push on the fruit, it will poke that right through it. You maybe could on the apple. But anything else, you can't. Especially the strawberries. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, we're going to start doing a foodie Friday. So it'll be a lot of fun. But I remember it was nine weeks ago today that I put up a video that kind of did well. Got over 25,000 or almost 25,000 views now. But when I put it up, I said at the end, we're at 14 subscribers. So it'll be fun to see us grow. And now we're over 2,100 subscribers. That's just crazy. And it's because of you guys. I mean, I'll tell you, and sometime, sometime I'll go into it all, but um, it's hard to call my channel. People do that. Welcome to my channel, my channel. But guys, I think this is our channel because without y'all, it's just me talking to myself. <laughs> I've done that for years in my craft room. But yeah, the grapes you can put in if you take a grape off and poke it in that always works well there's more on the packaging at the end of this video and then also how to transport it without it falling over that's what most people on the videos they never show you how to package it and never show you how to transport it now this particular little glass it's clear so i put kale down there looks a little better than putting lettuce down there <laughs> 
And you see, I manhandle that lettuce. Because that's what's good about lettuce is you can squish it up and make it whatever size you need. And then it fits through that little opening and then it opens back up a little inside. Although I will say, don't, don't use a plastic container. This little plastic cup here, it did not want to stay up because it gets very top heavy. So I would recommend sticking with something glass if it's that small or something real flat. And we'll put the same basic stuff in it. We, we're not going to say mom on this one, but there's some more. These were the small ones. Remember, I'd cut the ends off of some of the cantaloupe. And it was for this little container. And I like to... Once you have your snips in your hands, just cut all the skewers that are you're about to use. And that way you don't have to cut, set it down, cut, set it down, cut, set it down. My mom used to help me with fruit bouquets. And uh, we got quite a, quite a good system going at some point. And we learned a lot on how to be more efficient. And that was one of the tricks is just if you have to... And this is in crafting in general, not just fruit bouquets or fruit arrangements. You, um, the more you pick up a tool and set it down, pick it up, set it down, pick it up, set it down, you're just burning time. There's a, an efficiency to it. If you're just crafting for fun, I don't know that it makes that big of a difference. <laughs> but sometimes we tend to not craft because it gets tedious. So if we can streamline our work, then it makes it more fun and then makes it more enjoyable. As I mentioned, don't use this container and definitely stick with glass, stick with something flat, or stick with something that has a wider opening because this one, I really couldn't get a lot of stuff in there to make it big and pretty and full because it all just kind of bunched in the middle. I mean, I think it was cute for sure. And you can see there, I've got my needle nose down. But yeah, it's... Definitely get something that, that will allow you to kind of space everything out a little better. But it was cute. My ne The next one that we have, it's the uh, strawberry margarita. <gasps> I love that one so much. It's in a margarita glass and then it's all those chocolate covered strawberries and some of them weren't chocolate covered. But yeah, this one just covering up the skewers there. Add in a little bit more color. And that's where you just kind of play with it and see what you think, what you like. But take that advice. Bigger mouth containers. <laughs> and again, just kind of bring your bag down and set it inside. They're real cute too if you put that curly ribbon. That's what I end up doing with them. And then you can attach a card to that use a hole punch and attach a card in on one of the ribbons super cute and here just take the lettuce squish it in there first on this one because it's see-through as well I'll put a little bit of kale on the bottom of it as well look how big and full though and that is the same kale it just blows my mind The kale really does elevate the look. Some people use tissue paper or different things to fill in. I just think when you're dealing with food, it's just not as appealing or appetizing. And with this, the skewers are actually what's going to hold that kale in place. So you just kind of pile it on until you get to put, poking some of those in there. And this one is truly a personal preference. I'll show you here all the different things. We've got the coconut, the bits of brickle, some plain ones and some dipped ones. And I'll tell you, I, <laughs> I ended up, I put it in there, I took some pictures and then I didn't like the pictures. So I moved it around and moved it around and moved it around 
taking a picture of anything you do in your, you know, craft room or even in the kitchen. If you take a picture of something, it tells the true story and if it needs changing around. And so I took several pictures and changed it up. So where you see me placing them right now is not where they ended up. So always be willing to make changes as needed. This margarita glass came from Dollar Tree and it's really heavy so it's it's great to use to to put all these strawberries because they're not going to go anywhere. But again, using those snips just makes it so much or needle nose makes it so much easier to put everything inside. And I'm so sorry that I am always in front of the camera because working in the kitchen, I just don't have a, a good setup. And I really didn't want to put off the video. I think my very first video, I told you that they said you got to start messy. And so sometimes you just got to do it. And if it's going to be kind of messy, then that's just the way it is. Because trust me, I could procrastinate plenty and just have a million reasons not to do it. Now these are what we're going to put our chocolate dipped strawberries in. They came from Walmart. I typically use some stuff I get from a professional restaurant place, but I wanted to show y'all something that you can easily get. And like I said, those are Wilton brand and they came from Walmart. It only holds nine of the strawberries. But I definitely recommend plastic because strawberries have a lot of moisture as well. And if you go a day or two in something that's cardboard, then that cardboard gets very soft because it starts absorbing the moisture from the strawberries. So that's why I think it's real important to use a plastic container for those. So before I get any comments, these are things for demonstration only. So no, I did not wear gloves. Now to transport it, I got this box from Walmart. I think it said it was 12 by 10 by 8 and it was too tall so what I did is cut off the flaps and then I will I was really just going to use those I create flaps here in a second but I couldn't do that because it was just too tall so I cut off the flaps that were there created my own flaps and then you just barely score it and then you don't have to, you don't cut all the way through when you're creating the place for it to bend. So I just use some pretty wrapping paper and then I'm gonna cut a hole in the center and that gets me to the, the flaps I created. And then I just cut through those on two sides and then just bend it in. And now like those flaps will go down when I put the mug in or the cup. Oh yeah, tissue paper first. And I always like to put the tissue paper and then what you'll do is take the other set of tissue paper or the other piece and turn it the opposite way so that you've got all the corners poking out. Then you set it down inside there, and now when you travel, it's not going anywhere. Adding balloons always makes something look more festive, but otherwise, we are done. So thanks so much for watching. Maybe check out another video, and we'll catch you on the next one.